Good morning, everybody. The girl's here. I can't see Hannah that way. I don't know where. She's not right there. There's Harley right here. Hannah's right up here. Oh, you can kind of see her. She's on this side. Okay, so she's she's still with us. So the power of prayer. Oh, what? See, you're still with us, right? Yeah. She had her Cuban sandwich this morning. Yum, yum. She loves it. They slow roast their pork. They have ham that they slow roast. It's a total different. It's not like lunch meat type of Cuban. So high quality everything for her. It's just as if I was eat, cooking for her at home, which if I had to add that to the mix, there's no way. Thank the Lord for the slice of paradise pizza for me because I'm exhausted already and I was sick all day yesterday. I don't know what happened, but I could barely move. It was bad. So, today's a new day and my stomach is okay thus far. Thank the Lord. So, so today's reading um, for Sunday, August 22nd, your homework assignment is to read Isaiah 58, 1 to 11, and Psalms 146. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness. Isaiah 58, 10. The title for today is Light Shining in the Darkness. Boy, oh boy, do we need that. We all need to shine our lights bright. Some religious people in Isaiah's day, as in our day, were eager for God and other people to witness and praise their deity. But what God wants to see from his people are humble and loving acts of kindness and charity rather than lip service. Right? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> are you agreeing? Okay. God desires that our light would shine on Christ rather than ourselves. Okay. I watched Trump last night. And do I think that he is capable of running our company, our, our country? Absolutely, 100%. However, he needs to close the pie hole. I'm sorry. No disrespect to him. But at what point does he stop with the madness? He can do this job. He just needs to have another come to Jesus meeting. Or I need to have a little talk with him. Just saying. So he understands how people receive him and why there is so much fight and the boxing gloves are on against him. Just saying. Just uh, just something that I have learned by watching his behavior and listening to his banter. Does he have a lot of good points? Yes. But I don't care about what this done. That doesn't matter. What are you going to do for we the people? Period. It's not about the past. It's not about, we need you to step up. Pull out in your big boy pants and address us as a nation and motivate us. That's what's gonna get this world to turn around. It's not the banter. We need motivation. We need a role model, right? As God's Spirit moves us to give generously of our time and resources, share food with the hungry, provide the poor with clothing and shelter, and offer help and hope to the oppressed, Isaiah 58, 7 and 10, God's name will be praised. As we put our faith into action, the light of Christ will shine like the dawn amid the darkness of sin and unbelief in our world. As we serve others in the name of Christ, the Holy Spirit will help us witness of our faith and words as well as deeds. Our purpose is to point people to Jesus, the light of the world, who will lead them by faith out of the gloom and despair of this world to live in, his marvelous and eternal light. You get that? 
Jesus, our light and our salvation, shine in us and through us so that your light and love, our saving truths, will be reflected in all we say and do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, that's all we need to do. Because Biden can't do it. He can't do this job. It's clear as bell. And the corruptness that they used to get him into office as the president, they picked the wrong person to execute their plan against the rest of us. He's not strong enough to execute their plan. So now what are they doing to retaliate? Stirring up more nonsense to put more fear in we the people. That's what Biden is doing and his administration is putting fear in the American public. Turn to Jesus like I did and I don't live in fear anymore. I have never been so confident in my faith and not afraid to live. When I lived at Green Acres, I'd have security on, locked up. I was scared to death out there. Well, because that house was not in a good state until I, left, until I got a hold of it. So I don't have fear here in this house. I haven't from the minute I walked in here. This is no doubt heaven's treasure. That name, Mark Tavalelli, you started it with heaven in the name. You were right. This is a little slice of heaven on earth. It just is. So find your little slice of heaven today and hug and love on your loved ones. And please pray for me and Harley because I am really struggling. It's really hard um, on me. I've had a lot of head pain. It's not on my right side where it's always been. It's on my left. So I feel like the right side where the illness had, had collected is gone, but it's now in a vengeance on the left side. So I am in a lot of pain every day and I'm struggling every day, but he has given me a strength like none other to take care of my girls in the midst of it all. So if you don't believe in Jesus, I don't know how you can't after hearing my stories because my stories are factual. They're not made up and they're not one-sided. That's just how I have always told a story. I tell the facts. That's how we all should live. Have a great day. Bye.